Well, hey everybody, welcome to this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Things might look a little bit different today and that's because I'm actually just back from the gym. Haven't even taken a shower. I'm sweaty. I don't feel very good because the Illustrator tutorial that I recorded earlier today uh, for next week's tutorials, um, I realized it got deleted or corrupted or somehow has gone missing. Therefore, it is 2.15 in the morning and I am re-recording this because that's how we do it around here. Anyway, this tutorial is going to be all about creating this moonlight uh, silhouette portrait we're going to do it better than the first take because that's the way things work around here. I think you're really going to like it. If you do enjoy the video, hey, hit the little thumbs up button to give this video a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. That way you never miss another graphic design or Adobe Illustrator tutorial in the future. Plus, you never know when something like this will happen. Uh, so that's fun, right? Let's jump into this tutorial and check it out. And also, if you do feel so inclined, uh, Go ahead and hit that little link that just appeared up in the top corner of the video, somewhere up there. It's probably the best way you can support the channel by picking up my Photoshop course, all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. If you like what you see on the channel, hey, pick up that course. It's the best way to support what we're doing right here, right now. I am working on an Illustrator course that I'm hoping will come out soon, and I'll be able to promote that. So, hey, you're here for Illustrator. You can get extra Illustrator. But for now, we just have our Photoshop course, so uh, at some point it'll be updated, though. Let's jump into this tutorial and check this thing out. So here is the actual finished piece of artwork. Uh, I do want to mention, I must mention, that this is very heavily inspired, in fact, nearly identical to uh, this artist on Dribble, Marco Stupich, I believe is how you pronounce his name, and he has a piece here entitled The Wolf. I'll make sure I link to his uh, bio and his profile here on Dribble.com. He has some really, really great stuff, uh, but this one was just, uh, it's a masterpiece, isn't it? Uh, also, the elk that I am using using here. It's a, it's a photo of an elk that I got from unsplash.com. I'll also make sure that that's linked down in the description of this video as well. So this whole thing begins up here by going file new and creating a new document. We're going to go 2560 by 1440 and go ahead and choose create. And of course we need to create our background. So grab the rectangle tool, click once, and we're going to punch in 2560 by 1440, the exact size of our document. Hit OK. And here it is. Whoop, I double clicked accidentally. Uh, we, here's our, our shape. It has a white fill and a black stripe. Stroke. I'm going to select the stroke and hit this little slash icon here. That's going to get rid of the stroke. In fact, I'm going to double click on the fill and we're going to set the background color now. Now, the background color I want is 030F33. Hard to remember these things off the top of your head sometime. Uh, so it's this very, very dark, but pretty saturated bluish purpley color. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to grab my selection tool here. And I'm going to use my alignment tools to align to the uh, vertical and horizontal centers there. Uh, important note here, under this little icon here at the top of the screen, you want to make sure Align to Artboard is turned on. Otherwise, your alignment features uh, are not going to work. So next up, well, I'm going to come up here to my flyout menu here for the Layers panel and go down to Panel Options and just change the row size to other and I'm going to make this like 60 pixels large. It's going to make it a little easier for everybody following along to just see my layers. I'm going to double click and I'm going to name this layer BG for background and I'm going to click on this little area between the eyeball and this blue bar and that's going to lock the layer. So I don't move it accidentally. I don't select it. I don't delete it. I don't mess it up. And that's just the way I like it. All right, next up, or the first thing I should say we need to do after creating the background is let's set our fill color here to white. So I'm just going to double click. I'm going to set this to white. Hit OK. And I'm going to right click on my rectangle tool and it's going to give me my little pop out. And I'm going to choose ellipse tool. And I'll just, uh, well, I need to create a new layer first. And we'll just name this layer artwork or something like that. I'm going to click a single time and I want to just go with the default 100 pixel by 100 pixel ellipse. Go ahead and hit OK. There's our little ellipse, looking good, right? Now we're gonna come up here to Window, and I'm gonna choose Brushes. We wanna open the Illustrator Brush Panel. You ever jumped into this? It's pretty cool. Uh, so what we wanna do is select our little ellipse here, and then come over to the Brush Panel and choose the New Brush icon down here at the bottom, New Brush, and we wanna choose the Scatter Brush. So we don't need any of these other options. We need the Scatter Brush, hit OK. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna get our Scatter Brush options. Well, first and foremost, let's give this a name. We're gonna name this Clouds, and we're gonna change the size to random. We're gonna change the spacing to random. And we're going to change scatter to random as well. 
Now, under these options, we want to set the random of the size. Uh, we're going to allow it to go down to like 10% of its original size or get as big as 175% of its original size. So that's what these sliders are. How small will the smallest circle be allowed to get in this sort of randomization? And how big will the biggest circle be allowed to get? I think 10 and 175% is, is pretty good. For spacing, we're going to go with uh, like 10 and let's go 200. Give it some good spacing. And scattering, we'll go with like 50 uh, and and 175. Something like that should work perfectly. Rotation, well, it's really not going to matter because we have a perfect circle. So no matter what way it's rotated, it just is. So we're not even going to touch rotation. We're going to hit OK. And what's going to happen here is we have a new brush. It's this blank square here. See how it shows up and says, hey, clouds. The reason that it's blank is because uh, the circle we created is white. But I kind of want the circle to be white. Um, so I'm not going to mess around with it. I just know that's the clouds brush. I'm going to close my brushes panel. In fact, I'm going to select that original piece of artwork and I'm going to delete it. What we're going to do now is come over here to the paintbrush tool. And I'm going to, well, we should probably actually open up our brushes panel again. I'm going to slide it off over here. It's helpful to have this up just uh, because if you somehow deselect that brush, well, it's right there to be selected again. Now, with this brush tool, we can just begin brushing uh, anywhere we like. And as we brush, we're going to start to create a very bubbly, bulbous pattern, uh, which is going to become, you know, it's going to start looking like basically the top edge of, see these clouds back here? We're going to create sort of those three cloud shapes using this brush. So I'm just going to go over this uh, until I get a shape that I kind of like. And I'm, I'm primarily focused on the top edge. See, that really messes up my top edge. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to undo that as well. Uh, something like that. It's probably pretty good. And what I'm probably going to do now is just take my regular ellipse here and I'm just going to draw a couple ellipses. I'm going to drag this guy up. Whoops, double click to get back out to my original artwork. Drag that guy up. I'm going to make sure that it's filled with white. There we go. That is filled with white. Great. And I'll probably hold down Alter Option and just drag that ellipse over. Great. And I'll just select that little circle and delete it because I don't want that. All right. Uh, what I can do, this will be sort of our first chunk of clouds, if you will. I'm going to nudge that down just because that doesn't quite look right. I'm going to just drag a selection over this whole area here. All right. So I'm going to select, drag a selection out over the whole area. And I'm going to drag this stuff down to here so we can really get a close look at it. And I'm going to go Object Expand Appearance. And what that's going to do is it's going to take all those circles off the paths and just recognize them as individual objects, which is great. I do want to get rid of a couple. Like, see that little circle there? I'm going to delete that. That's that's going to be kind of nasty looking. Uh, this here, I'm just going to nudge that down. It's within a sort of a group. But I'm just going to nudge that downward a little bit to kind of smooth out the top of my little circle. That's great. And I probably want to cover up any holes like that just because I don't yet yet know uh, what's going to be visible and what will not be visible. Make sure we fill that circle with white. All right, great. So once we've kind of created our first cloud shape, just drag over that whole cloud shape. And we want to go Window Pathfinder. Grab that Pathfinder panel. Great. I'm going to move the Pathfinder over to here. And we're interested in this icon right here, the Merge option. This is going to take all these circles and make them one big shape. We now have our first chunk of clouds. So I'm going to take this guy and drag it down here off the artboard. And let's just repeat that process. So I'm going to make two more of these shapes. I'm going to speed through it real quick, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back. See, now we have three different shapes, and they, they kind of range from our initial one was nice and contained, and it got bigger, and then it just got ridiculously big. Uh, but that's all right. What we're going to do is we're going to fill all three of these shapes with a shade of blue, something that's just a little bit lighter than our background, and uh, then we're going to layer them and stack them, add a little shadow to build some depth here in this effect. Now, when I select all three of these shapes by just dragging a selection over them, you can see over here the fill thumbnail is saying, like, hey, what's going on? We don't know what's going on. Don't worry about that. Uh, we're going to double click on this and we're going to fill this. Uh, I've got a color written down here. I'm going to go 004 uh, D84. And it's kind of this flat but still pretty saturated blue. Hit OK. And you can see they're all showing up gray. Why is that? Well, up here in the color panel, you can see we're just viewing this based on the K or the black uh, the bits, the black channel, if you will. So it's going to be somewhere between very white and very black. And here it's very dark gray. Uh, we want to introduce color, though. So up here from this little flyout menu, we're just going to go to HSB, which is Hue, Saturation, Brightness, and voila, there our blue now appears. 
I'm going to come over here to the layers panel and I'm going to hit this little arrow next to my artwork and drop my artwork down. Now, the initial uh, shape, the cloud shape right here, that's actually going to be the clouds that are in the foreground, the foremost clouds, but they're all the way in the back in terms of our uh, layer structure here. So with that artwork selected, I'm going to go object, arrange, bring to front. See that? Bam. Brings that layer right up to the front. And the largest clouds here, I think it just makes sense that those are in the back, but you can see that's the layer that's in the center, right? That right there, that indicates that that is the layer that's selected. So now we'll go object, arrange, send to back, and boom, it's going to drop that layer down to the bottom. So now our layers are kind of lined up correctly. I'm going to select all three of these layers now, and we're going to make sure that we're aligning to artboard, and we're going to align here to the horizontal center, just like that, and then I'm going to drag these bad boys up kind of right about there to put them in place. And what I want to do now is take like the, the layer that's all the way in the back, the biggest layer, and nudge it upward. It's hard to really see what's going on here. So let's actually, let's select our, our frontmost layer here, this one. And we're going to set the opacity here in the transparency panel. Let's set the opacity to like 90%. Just knock that down a little bit. Let's go to the middle uh, layer here. And we'll set the opacity of this one to about 75%. And we're still not going to see much of a change except for the other stuff that's just over the background. And then we're going to go to the rearmost clouds. And we're really going to drop the opacity of these. Let's knock it down to like 35% opacity. So now we can kind of see the three layers of clouds. Uh, to add a little bit more differentiation, we're going to add some drop shadowing. But I think this rear cloud still needs to go up a little bit. Uh, this cloud here in the middle, maybe we'll rotate it a little. Something... Oh, that's the front cloud. Let's go make sure we have the middle cloud selected. Let's just rotate that bad boy kind of like that. Maybe I'll push it up a little bit more. Cool. And then I'll select the cloud most in the front, and I'll just knock it downward a little. Maybe push it off to the side a touch. Something like that looks cool. And the next step is just going to be to add a drop shadow to this. So we want to go up here to Effect stylize drop shadow and here under drop shadow I'm not going to turn on preview because I kind of already know what I want to do I want to leave the mode at multiply I'm going to set the opacity to 35% the X offset to 0 the Y offset is going to be negative 10 it's going to kind of push it up and backward and then what's going to kind of smooth this whole thing out is the blur we're going to give a hefty 25 pixel blur and leave the color as just the black that's fine black for the color go ahead and hit OK and you're going to see this is going to give us this pretty substantial blur around these clouds and you can say hey look there's blur on the bottom too. It looks messy. Don't worry about it because of the way we're going to mask this in just a moment. You're really not going to see any of that stuff. So I'm not super concerned about any of that. Uh, now what we're going to do is select the middle group and we're just going to go effect apply drop shadow. It's going to take that same exact drop shadow and just apply it right to that shape. And we can also grab the group of clouds all the way in the back or the shape uh, group of clouds in the back and just go effect apply drop shadow to that as well. Although it's it's not as necessary for the, the rearmost cloud if you will, but you can still throw it on there um, and sometimes it gives a, a cool effect. So now what we need to do is select Select all three groups of clouds, right? We just applied all the drop shadows. Select all three groups of clouds. You can see we have them all selected here in the layers panel. Hit Command or Control G to group them up. And we want to create a new ellipse here. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm just going to click a single time. And I'm going to create a 975 by 975 pixel ellipse. I think that'll be big enough. Hit OK. And cancel if you accidentally double click. Uh, and yeah, I've got a circle that works great. I'm going to align this to the very center of my document. Horizontal and vertical centers. Great. Looks good. Um, and I'm going to give this a gradient. So I'm going to go gradients and then I'm going to click. I'm actually going to click right there on the gradient thumbnail. And from the gradient type here, I'm going to choose radial. Now with the radial gradient, I'm going to slide the middle uh, location slider uh, over. So I push the black all the way to the edge and I'm going to select the black stop and I want to make sure this is real, real rich black. So from the flyout menu here in the color panel, I'm going to choose CMYK and we're going to increase the C, the M, and the Y all the way to 100% to get the blackest of blacks. Uh, it'll just work best for our mask. That looks pretty good. Once we have this, we can go edit, cut. We're going to cut that piece of artwork completely off. And here, this is important. We want to select the actual layer group that is holding all the clouds, not the actual master sort of parent layer, but just that layer group, all right? So we're going to come in here and just select that layer group, and I'm going to come over to the transparency panel. If you don't have that open, it's just window transparency right there. And I'm going to double click here on this thumbnail. This is the sort of create a layer mask thumbnail. In fact, when I double click this, you're going to see that it all disappears. But here's the trick. Remember, we cut that gradient uh, ellipse off of our off of our artboard. So now we're going to go edit, paste in front. And what we have is just we're seeing the middle of the clouds and it's fading to nothing because all of the black is hiding all of our artwork. Notice as soon as it went black, all of our artwork was hidden. And now just that white faded ball in the middle is showing just sort of a glowing ball of our clouds and nothing else. 
Kind of a cool effect. All right, now you want to select your original artwork thumbnail right there, and it's going to get out from editing the opacity mask. And we have just sort of this globe of clouds. It's actually kind of a cool effect just in and of itself, but we've got a lot more to do. And it all begins with creating a hill here in the foreground on which our elk or bear or wolf or robot or whatever you're creating will be standing. We're gonna create this shape by clicking and holding on the ellipse tool and grabbing the star tool. And I'm going to click and drag out a star. In fact, I can just click once. Uh, and I'm going to give my star three points, which is just a triangle. And we can go ahead and hit OK. We can make it a very tiny triangle. And we can always scale it up using the selection tool, hold down shift, and just scale that triangle up. And we probably want to rotate it a little bit so the point is straight up like that. That looks good. Uh, I'm actually going to move this off of my artboard here so we can work on it out here in peace. I'm going to grab the direct selection tool. That's the white uh, arrow at the top of your toolbar there. And when you do that, see these like circles that appear in all the corners of your shape? We're just going to click and hold on one of them and drag downward a little bit. That's going to flatten that corner of the triangle or just kind of round it, I guess, more than flatten it. But it, what it's going to allow us to do is grab our regular selection tool. See, I would switch back to the black arrow there and we can just grab the middle handle on any side and just stretch this thing way out I mean we can just pull it way out and really get kind of a flat hill shape that we can use here in our uh, in our artwork one of the things that I need to do here is just trim these wings off that are sticking out into the middle of nowhere. I'm going to nudge this downward a little bit. In fact, I'm going to pull the bottom of it up, I think, just a touch. Something like that should work great for us. I want to trim these wings off. Now, I could just mask it to the artboard, but we're going to use the Pathfinder panel here, and I'm going to just drag some rectangles in here. So I'm going to drag a rectangle over here, grab my selection tool, hold down shift, and select that triangle that makes up our ground. So I've selected the rectangle and the triangle, just held down my shift key to do that. And then over here in the Pathfinder, we're going to use this minus front option. I'm going to click that. You can see, boom, it just trims that side right off. And now I'm going to use the rectangle tool again, draw a rectangle over the other side of the triangle. Again, just shift click both shapes, minus front, voila, we trim that right down. And now we want this hill to have the matching color. We want it to match exactly with the background. That way it just is going to look like it's a hill that belongs. So grab the eyedropper tool located right over here, eyedropper, and just sample the background colors, boom. And you can see here when I deselect, we now have our hill in the foreground upon which our little elk will be standing. All right, now let's just zoom in on our document here. We got all this screen real estate and we're wasting it all by just keeping this thing zoomed way out. I'm gonna close the brush panel. We're actually gonna open it up again in just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna lock up the layer or the layer group here that contains all these clouds because it's just getting annoying selecting it or hovering over it and seeing it show up all the time. I need to create a little bit of glow coming from behind the hill here and we're gonna do that using an ellipse. So I'm gonna drag out a just a flat oval here and bring it close to the top of the hill. I'm, as I'm dragging out, I'm holding down my space bar. It allows me to move the shape uh, before I actually commit to creating it. And I need the color to change. So I'm going to make this just like a bright yellow or something, something that's just very noticeable. Uh, the color really doesn't matter. All right, we're going to select the shape and we're going to go effect stylize outer glow. And we're going to change this outer glow to the mode of color dodge. We're going to select the color swatch here and we're going to make it like a pretty bright blue. So I'm going to go something like that. Uh, we're going to set the opacity at 75%, maybe we'll go a little higher, we'll go like 85%, I think. And then for the blur, we're gonna give it a hefty blur of about 100 pixels. And let's preview this, see what it looks like. I'm most interested in seeing what the blur looks like when it comes out over the clouds. It actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. And we need to drag this ellipse now beneath our hill path. So I'm gonna drag it down in the layers panel beneath that, great. And you may see a little bit of glow down here at the bottom. It's very subtle, but it's down there, peeking out of the bottom. If you see that, simply drag the bottom of the shape upward a little bit. It's just going to give more space between the bottom of the shape and the bottom of our hill and just hide some of that glow. It might be the easiest and fastest way to just get rid of that. And now we have a nice little glow coming from behind the hill as well. I'm going to close my Pathfinder panel here. This is kind of fun here. We're going to create some random stars that are going to make this like a starry night here up with our clouds in the sky. Typically, you would have to use different plugins and things like that for Illustrator to achieve this kind of effect, but I think you can get a pretty good effect with a scatter brush. And we've already used a scatter brush to create the clouds, so let's create another scatter brush. Let's set our fill here to solid white. Double click on your fill. Uh, thumbnail there and just set it to solid white. Grab the ellipse tool. Once more, we're going to create an ellipse. Now this time we're going to create a tiny ellipse. Let's go like 10 by 10 pixels. Very, very small. Hit OK. There it is. It's tiny. It's hidden there. We're going to go window brushes to open up our brushes panel once more. 
Still have my fill color white, remember, and we're going to hit that little button down there again, new brush, of course, scatter brush. We're going to hit OK. We're going to name this scatter brush stars or starry sky or whatever, and we're going to do this basically the same thing. The options are going to be a little bit different, but we're going to set the size, spacing, and scatter all to random, and we're not going to mess with rotation. Now, here for size, we're going to let this get as small as 10%. You know what? I'm going to go a little bit less. I'm going to go 6% of the original 10 pixel by 10 pixel ellipse that we're creating, and I'll leave the largest that it's allowed to get at the 10 pixel by 10 pixel, which is 100% of the size of the brush now. That's great. Now, we're going to randomize this. Randomize and scatter, we need this to be big. So the smallest we're going to space it is going to be 500%. The largest we'll space is 1,500%. And we'll do the same numbers for scatter. So 500 on the low end, 1500 on the high end. We're not going to touch rotation. We're going to hit OK. And look at that. We've got our stars scatter brush. We can use our selection tool here. Just get rid of that initial star. Grab our uh, starry brush. Grab our brush tool. I'm going to move my brushes panel over here. There we go, and I'm just going to go ahead now and begin painting with this brush, just kind of in big squiggly patterns. You can see we get what looks to be just kind of like, hey, those are just totally random stars that somebody placed, and we didn't have to go in and place a bunch of tiny dots. Hey, that's a win, right? Uh, so there we go. That's probably pretty good. What I want to do here is I'm going to scroll down in my layers panel over here, and I'm going to lock up that glowing ellipse and my hillside here. So I'm going to lock both of those layers. I can close my brushes panel now. I'm going to grab my regular selection tool and drag a selection out over all of these paths that we just created, all these stars, and we want to go object, group, to group them up, and we can even name this group stars. Now, the reason that I want to save this group is because we need to uh, we need to mask this as well. We're going to put this inside of that same kind of glowing mask that the clouds are in. So I'm going to unlock the clouds group here. Remember, we need to open up uh, our cloud. Oh, no, actually, we don't need to open the clouds group. We grouped it because we were masking the entire group. So just select that, that group, and you can see there's our mask for our cloud clouds, we're going to actually click on this thumbnail for the mask, and that's going to allow us to select that mask, and you probably guessed what we're going to do next, edit, copy, not cut, but copy, select the original artwork thumbnail here in the transparency panel to get back to where we were, select the stars group, and here we go again, we're going to double click on this create a mask option, command or control F to paste that same mask in place, and I think what I'm going to do is nudge this mask upward, just to reveal more of those starry skies up near the top, alright, that's kind of going to give the sky like more of this like the heavens are up there kind of feeling, alright, let's select our original artwork thumbnail right there, great, deselect everything, let's uh, make sure we lock up our our clouds layer again so we don't accidentally select it and at this point we can do a number of things we can leave the stars just the way they are at 100% opacity we can reduce the opacity a little bit what I think I want to try doing is set it to the blend mode overlay and then maybe duplicating it a couple times so we can just select that layer drag it right down to the new layer option and if your mouse doesn't glitch out, you can actually do this correctly. There we go. New layer. I'm going to try it again. And another new layer. And you can see that this gives us this like gradation of solid white stars down here over the clouds to these like very bluish. I don't know. The stars all begin to interact with the background and almost appear to twinkle or become semi-transparent, which is great, which is kind of the way stars are. All right. We can lock all these stars up. In fact, I'll probably grab these three star layers. So just select the top layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer, and I'm going to drag these beneath the hill because they really should be behind the hill, even though there are no stars appearing on top of the hill, just for the sake of making sure it all works if we need to move things around later. It's nice to keep your layers in proper order. All right, now, hey, guess what? We're going to create the moon. This is a moonlight silhouette scene. We need a moon. Uh, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hit this little swap fill and stroke arrow to give me a fill. I'm going to double click on my fill. I'm going to go to the blues. I want to create a, bl a, a, a like a white that is influenced by blue. So something like this, E3, E, D, F, F looks great. It's just, it's very close to white, but it's also very much blue. I think it's really going to work for our scene here. You could also try like some light yellows. You know, the moon does kind of have that yellowish, you know, look to it, but I'm going to go with blue because I feel like it just goes with our scene. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm just going to click once. And the size of the ellipse, I'm going to roll with like a 400 by 400 pixel ellipse. So let's go 400 by 400. Great. And uh, I'm going to just center this guy in the middle of our document like so. Maybe I'll nudge it upward a little bit. I just want like the very bottom of the moon to be dipping just beneath my hillside. In fact, I'll grab this ellipse and just drop it beneath my hill path, right? There we go. See how the, the moon is just rising above the hillside, so to speak. All right, we're going to grab this moon. Now here's where kind of the cool stuff happens. We're going to grab the moon, just select it with the selection tool, and go object path, offset path. And we're going to offset it by 45 pixels. If I preview this, you can see it's going to create a second circle, just like a concentric ring right outside of my moon. When I hit OK, the magic of the offset path 
is that it's creating a second version of the circle. See that? So we've got one circle here, which is our big circle, and we have our original small circle in the middle. Let's grab the newer, bigger circle, which, oh, by the way, is just behind my circle, which is even more perfect. It's exactly how I need it. We're going to go object path, offset path again, another 45 pixels, hit OK, and we're going to do this one more time. Object, path, offset path. 45 pixels. You got it. Great. Now, we want to select this outermost ring. It's the lowest path, the largest sort of version of the moon, and we're going to set the opacity of this to like something small, 8%. Yeah, that looks good. Let's grab the next ring, and we'll set this to, to slightly higher opacity. Let's try like 12, because remember, we're going to not only have the 12 opacity from this ring, but it's over top of an 8 opacity ring. So cumulatively, it's kind of like 20% opacity there for that ring. We're going to select the next ring inward, and we'll make this guy a little bit higher even, so we'll go like 18% opacity. And then the very centermost ring, or circle is our moon so that stays solid so we've created this moon with these rings let's save our document here and we'll talk about getting this elk or whatever whatever animal or object you have placed in front of this as a silhouette so now that it's saved, it's time to place our little animal or creature or whatever we're placing in front of the moon there. I'm actually going to grab all of these layers. So I'm going to select this little circle in the layers panel, hold down shift, and select the little circles for each ring of the moon. And I'll just group these into one group. Command or control G, double click on that group, and I'll name it moon. And we can lock that up as well to just leave it be. Uh, and now let's bring our elk into place. Now I'm using an elk, honestly, because it was the first stock photo I found on unsplash.com which is a great free stock photo site. There'll be a link for this image down in the description to the video. But I'm using this because it was the first photo I found of an animal that kind of had a majestic-ish pose that I thought, hey, that could actually work for what we're working on here. So you can bring your uh, photo or whatever it is you're tracing into Illustrator. It's going to place it as a new layer. You can see here it's placed up here as a linked file. I'm going to lock that linked file because I don't want to mess around with it. And what I'll do is I'll zoom in on this. And for something like this, what I typically will go ahead and do is begin with like the ellipse tool, hold down my shift key, and I'll just draw out circles wherever I can. So like I can come back here and get like the, the rear thigh muscle, the rump of the elk, if you will. So that shape there, we've got his front shoulder up here. We can just go ahead and place this circle. And again, I'm just holding down my spacebar key before I commit the change. So we got that circle there. We can get his little tail in here. Uh, but boom, just like that. I can get like the, uh, whoops, I can get his, his belly down here, right, which is this nice, this nice drooping oval shape between those two circles. Uh, and then up here, I can use the pen tool. Now, the magic of the pen tool, if you go view and turn smart guides on, is we can work right from the path, right? And I can come right over here to the path where it needs to be joined with the circle just like that, and we can have a perfect connection between all of our shapes. And I would go around and trace the entire elk like this, and I would select all the shapes that I created, just like so, and uh, go Window, Pathfinder, where is it? There it is, and just merge all these shapes together. And I would have a single shape that would be my elk. Now, in order to save time so you don't have to painstakingly watch me trace out all of his antlers and everything like that, uh, I am going to delete this image, and I'm just going to copy over the elk which I have already traced, and that's here in my uh, original illustration. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the elk, Command or Control C, lock that artwork back up, come back to my new file, Command or Control V to paste them in place. I'm going to make them a bit smaller, I think, for this version, and I'm also going to rotate them a little bit. And basically what we'll do is just wrote, kind of push him into place. Eh, I'm going to push him back a little bit. I definitely want him to look like he's standing there bellowing into the moonlight and nobody's hearing him. I'm going to make him even smaller. I feel like it'll make the epicness of the moon seem all that much larger. So something like that. And really, as long as his legs are down beneath the hill, it's going to look like he's just standing in grass or something. And oh, by the way, when you create your shape, it should go without saying, you want to select that shape. Use your eyedropper tool and sample the background color. You got the background color. It's going to blend perfectly with your hill, and it's going to look like a great elk or wolf or robot or monster or grizzly bear or lion or whatever you darn well please standing in front of this huge moon set over these clouds all made out of vector artwork and illustrator. So I think that will pretty much wrap it up. I'm just going to zoom this artwork in a little bit more. And yeah, that's really it. That's using shape tools and drawing tools and, and masking and scatter brushes and all these different things to create this pretty cool little illustration. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, gym hat and all. Make sure you go ahead and hit the little like button. Subscribe to my channel, as I mentioned, in the open so you don't miss any of these tutorials in the future. Uh, oh, I should mention too, if you create this piece of artwork or add your own creative twist to it, maybe different 
different colors. Maybe it's a setting sun instead of a rising moon. And it's a, it's a, you know, Star Wars figure or something coming over a hillside or whatever. Upload it to Instagram. Tag me in Instagram. My Instagram name, I'll have a little graphic that pops out here. It is at Tutvid, T-U-T-V-I-D. I would love to see what you guys create. Uh, so for creating this amazing, super cool piece of artwork inspired by that amazing artist on Dribble whose name slips my mind right now, but his link is in the description, and you really, 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 really ought to check him out. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.